Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. Today is the day we are going over your favorite, all-time favorite prog albums. I asked you guys last week to give me your favorite prog album, and boy, did you come through. I had figured I'd get maybe a handful, and I could do them all in one video. Well, that's not going to happen. I had over 150 responses, and 105 albums were submitted for review and ranking. And that's what I'm going to do. I am going to rank all 105 of your submissions and I'm going to, you know, give you guys credit for them. Uh, there were actually five that I had not heard before. So it was a little rough for me to rank them and, uh, and the time span that I had, I did listen to them and, uh, yeah. So anyway, we're going to start at 105 with the uh, Karma Moi. This is a band I'd never even heard of before. The album's called Silence Between Sounds. This came from Prague Fan. It's an Italian band with female vocals. They're actually really cool. I need to dive in a little deeper. This was their third album and I actually liked it a lot. At 104, DK Media Music, the genius that came up with this idea in the first place, his submission is between The Buried and Me with Parallax 2. Not a band that I listen to a lot, but I do enjoy their music. I had not heard this album before and it sounded pretty good to me. At 103, oh, this was a shocker to me. Umphreys McGee, their sixth album, Mantis. I was blown away. This thing's really, really good. I thought Humphreys McGee was like a fish or a government mule kind of thing. You know, I was dead wrong. This is a prog album and it's really, really good. I'm I'm going to have to listen to some Humphreys McGee going forward. I was really, really impressed. At 102, Devil Doll with Elio Gabalis from V Seer. Oh, Humphreys McGee was from Dank 311, by the way. Uh, v Seer. Uh, has uh, nominated Elio Gabalis, uh, an album from 1990. They're from Slovenia. At the time, it was still Yugoslavia. The band is uh, fronted by the mysterious Mr. Doctor. I'd never heard of these guys. I actually really did like this album. It was really cool. But of the five that I'd never heard, uh, the one I liked the best at 101, which was given to me by 555. 555 is North Atlantic Oscillation, and the album is Grappling Hooks. Why have I never listened to these guys? before. This album is amazing. It is, it's, it's electronic. Um, it's kind of alternative. I hear like flaming lips or, you know, something like that. Mercury rev a little bit, but more electronic, more progressive. Wow. I am going to be doing a deep dive into their catalog. Absolutely. At number 100, I'm going with magma. And this was from Yannick Nick. Uh, the album is uh, Concor. Con um, I don't speak uh, Kobian. It's uh, Con Tarkos, which I guess was their fifth album. Really, their fourth. I guess uh, there was a Christian Vander uh, soundtrack that's uh, been considered a magma album uh, going forward. Uh, this sounded. I, this is not a magma album. I was super familiar with. I don't listen to a lot of magma. I did enjoy it though. At number nine. Uh, Hudson Bay Killer has nominated Peter Hamill's Over. This was uh, his fifth or sixth solo album. It, again, it's not one I've listened to a whole lot. The ones before it are I'm a lot more familiar with. This came out right after Nader's Big Chance. Um, it was supposed to be called Over Your Shoulder, I guess. Peter with his guitar and whatnot. At number 99, uh, account number 500 has nominated Yes Talk. Why, I have no idea. At number 97, Guitars, Cats, and Music has been on me about Zappa, like a bad suit. He just won't leave it alone. He nominated Apostrophe. He nominated Overnight Sensation. He nominated a whole bunch of Zappa stuff. But the first album he mentioned was Joe's Garage. So that's what I'm going with. Um, I've heard it before. I like it. 
I am spending more time with Zappa. I am going to do a Zappa episode in the near future at 96. Let's go to Australia and Kyrie Elysian with The Fountain Beyond the Sunrise. This was an album that uh, came out in the 60s, 70s and I was not familiar with it. My first contact with it actually came via a review from Notes Reviews a few months ago. It's a good album. It needs some better production. Uh, I like it. At number 95, courtesy, oh, well, the Kyrie Elysian was from Green Hogweed. Molly Whipple, uh... Gives us number 95, the first Ambrosia album. It's pretty great. I really do enjoy it. Yeah, it is prog, even though they went pop later on. At number 94, uh, the great Matthew and Doris. Hey, guys, you nominated Camel's Nude. It's down this low, not because I don't like Camel, but because I actually do have this ranked as my fifth or sixth favorite Camel album. At number 93, support Carfagen. Support Ukraine. It's, yeah, it's Anthony Collusion and a Solitary Sandpiper Journey, another fantastic album from Ukraine's finest prog artist. At number 92, Pendergon with the Masquerade Overture. Um, Neo Prague is not 100% in my wheelhouse. This is considered one of their better albums. I went back and listened to it again. Um, it's still not my favorite style of Prague, although I really do like Pendergon. At number 91, I'm going with Gentle Giant Acquiring the Taste, and this comes courtesy of uh, Ed Topo. Uh, yeah, Pendergon was from uh, Marty Schwartz and Carpagen was from John 5537. I'm forgetting to give these shout outs, but I'm gonna get better as we go along here. At number 90, how about Neu, Schwanstein, and Battlement. Thank you, Joe Ear. That is a great, great, great suggestion from Germany. Very Genesis-driven type of stuff. Very cool. At number 89, Tessa Valen Presidente with Lambert Land. This came from the Vinylizing Prager, uh, a fantastic record. I do like those guys a lot. I actually think I like the earlier stuff a little better. This was a little more jazzy, but really cool. At number 88, courtesy of Massive Progressive, we've got Froop and uh, Prince's, uh, Prince of Heaven's Eye. I like Froop a lot. Ireland's greatest uh, prog uh, outfit. Um, they put out like four fantastic albums in the 70s. At number 87, let's go to the Netherlands and focus with Moving Waves. This comes courtesy of Tim Johnson. At number 86, Fidu with number seven, clearly a seventh album, my favorite soap opera director. Thank you, uh, Petri Hakala, for that one. At number 85, let's do Gentle Giant's debut album. Thank you, Remus, for that. A fantastic uh, slice of early prog from 1970. At number 84, I made no allowances for live albums or EPs. Here's the first EP. It comes courtesy Vancy VGP, and it's Market Square Heroes for Marillion. We're going to have a little bit of a Marillion fest here in a second. At number 83, courtesy of Jim Newstead, the great Jim Newstead. He had just seen Tool, so I know it was on his mind, and he uh, nominated that Turles. Uh, at number 82, courtesy of the 365 Days of Prague. I love your channel, Naomi. You, of course, nominated Adam Hart Mother. At number 81, I'm on Duel 2 with Wolf City. That came from Steve Zubel, one of my very first subscribers. Thank you for that one. At number 80, let's do more Marillion uh, with Script for a Jester's Tear. Arthur Mole uh, nominated this one. And then we'll follow it up with number 79 misplaced childhood from our family in motion at number 78 octavarium from uh dream theater uh one of my favorite dream theater albums we just got two more here from chattanooga tennessee clocking in at number 77 lex rex by glass hammer what an amazing band they are uh their discography is just littered with great great songs and great great albums i just i just enjoy them a lot and finally at number 76 Three Friends from Gentle Giant rounds out today's listing. We're going to do 25 more tomorrow. Um, what is interesting about this is some of the uh, omissions. There's a few records that nobody mentioned, and I just want to 
shout out to those records that for some reason were omitted. Um, oddly enough, no one nominated Wish You Were Here. No one nominated Songs from the Wood. No one nominated Trilogy. No one nominated Lark's Tongues and Aspect. No one nominated uh, IQ's Road of Bones. Uh, no one nominated Wobbler's Dwellers of the Deep. There were no Styx nominations. There were no uh, Kansas nominations. So I was a little surprised about that. Also shut out Renaissance. Caravan. A lot of great, great bands. Well, no, Caravan. No, I'm wrong about Caravan. You'll see in uh, episode four of this. But anyway, there is a lot of weird, uh, weird stuff in these rankings. Obviously, this is clearly unscientific, but we're going to do uh, 51 to 75 tomorrow, and uh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, thank you so much for these subscript, you know, for, for these nominations. Um, you know, it was my wife's birthday last week, so I really didn't have a whole lot of time to do anything, so I was asking you guys to do all the work for me, and you did. You came out in record numbers, and I really appreciate it. Uh, again, this idea was stolen from DK Media Music, who, and, and in turn, it was stolen by me, and now Jim Newstead is doing something similar. Yeah, a good idea is a good idea. So I will see you guys tomorrow with 51 to 75, and uh, anyway, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, do the things you know you need to do to help grow your favorite channel on YouTube. And of course, it's the Prog Corner. Why would it be anything else? Anyway, I love you guys. Blessings. Have a great week.